Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, June 14th, 2024. 1034 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity on the globe shows a 3.3 into the Java Trench area. Also, uh, 1.4 up into the Alaska region. Uh, we did see some larger movement out here on the Big Island earlier today. 4.1 earthquake coming into this area south of Pahala. A little bit of swarming going on out here in this area. Fairly deep at about 35, 36 kilometers deep there. Now the USGS did put out a little uh, observatory information statement here about this 4.1. Uh, doesn't look like for now had any impact on either Mauna Loa or Kilauea volcanoes. But uh, this whole sequence of swarms that goes on there... Uh, has been going on at least since the 1960s. And there's a whole article on why this swarm has been so long and consistent uh, over the years. Uh, so I advise if you get a chance to read this, check it out. It's well worth a read. And um, they do chat a little bit about how uh, this could be you know, related, obviously, to the magma in what not uh, that comes up to the surface from the mantle area below but uh, anyway we'll have to watch this see if uh, this increasing swarm increases the earth the uh, potential for eruption there across the Kilauea volcano should be interesting to see what uh, takes place let me go over here to the Volcano hazards map here real quick, and we'll check out the deformation data, see what's going on with this um, volcano. There we go. So we're still at a yellow, it looks like. Deformation data. This is going to be the chart. Um, a little bit of rounding off here, it looks like, but overall trend still shows... Uh, inflation and it's been like this since the um, eruption here earlier this month so since then you know this is only a 10 hour long eruption on the southwest rip zone very minor in in the scale of things out here but we've been going up and up and up and up the days since then so we're at a point here where things should start to break whether we're going to see a magma intrusion off to the rift zone somewhere or we're going to see maybe some uh, eruptive fissure activity take place here across the area. It's something to watch pretty closely. We'll continue to keep an eye here on these earthquake patterns and uh, see what takes place here. All right. Uh, California, Northern California, still getting some movement out here. Uh, there was a little earthquake out here this morning, a 2.9 in the Gorda Ridges. I said to watch for this area, right? Because this is a, a divergent boundary, separation of the seafloor. You can see that. Uh, that does add strain out here across the northern edge, or the uh, southern end here of the Cascadia. And we did see another quake earlier this evening, a 2.3, 15 kilometers deep here into the Cascadia subduction zone. I want to see what we got for trimmer tonight uh, 159 epicenters of trimmer not uh not an increase if anything it looks like it may be going down a little bit but uh, overall you know things are still elevated out here uh, we've been looking at trimmer uh, occur for about a month now consistent and i think we're coming up on uh well 9528 epicenters of tr trimmer down there into the subduction zone mainly here across the southern end of the Cascadia. And of course, with uh, continued earthquake activity out here upstream, we've got to keep an eye on that. We did see a little bit of movement here on the northern edge of the plate boundary. That's going to be the, uh, the uh, San Andreas Fault 2.2 earlier this afternoon. Uh, throughout the Pacific Northwest, does look like we got uh, some swarming kicking back up here across the Mount St. Helens area. Mainly small microquakes, but down there, um, seven to eight kilometers below the surface. Now that could be recharging the uh, system down there. Could be magma recharging. We'll have to keep an eye on that here. Uh, Clear Lake volcanic field, hydrothermal plants in full swing out there uh, with consistent earthquake activity. 
Uh, the rest of California out here, no major swarms that I can see. No unusual activity, just a typical movement in the typical zones out there in Southern Cal. Um, Yellowstone, let's go over here real quick, see what we got. Not a whole lot, it looks like. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity whatsoever. Um, hard to see if that's going to be earthquake activity. If it is, it's very small, very minor. And, um, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot. All right, uh, rest of the country out here, as you can see, mainly uh, oil fields out here in Texas getting hit once again. Nothing going on across the New Madrid seismic zone or the eastern portion of the country. Uh, New Zealand did see a little bit of activity earlier this, uh, this afternoon as well. A couple threes here, pretty shallow across the plate boundary. One was felt uh, around the Christchurch area with that 3.4. Looks like things have uh, kind of mellowed off there for now, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Swarming pattern up here across the Indonesia Islands area up into the Philippines. Nothing big, but uh, definitely seen some, some uptick here across this area. Uh, a couple quakes there just south of Japan along the northwestern edge here of the Filipino Plate. And uh, let's see here, some interesting movement way up north here. That is a odd one. Don't really see too much earthquake activity way up here, but uh, it's kicking up a little bit up into the Canada area for a 4.2 coming in this afternoon. Looks like a little lonesome earthquake here just into the uh, Gulf of Alaska, 2.1 coming in. Uh, let's see here. The Cook Inlet area does look like we're still seeing a little bit of swarming out here across this area. We'll keep an eye on the Alaska region. This area has been showing some elevated movement, a lot of deeper activity, and a lot of northward migration out here across the Alaska region, indicative there of some stress and strain here across this plate boundary. Obviously, it's a major subduction zone, and uh, it's uh, building up some steam up here, it looks like. So we'll keep an eye on the Alaska area for now uh, let's see here across the himalayas north there well north into the china area 4.6 this afternoon uh the atlantic ocean way down here doesn't look like we had anything else stirring up since the um couple little earthquakes down there this morning in fact where'd they go looks like um this needs to go down a little bit there we go I like to keep the last 24 hours here on the globe sometimes it automatically adjusts itself Kind of spooky. A haunted app. Uh, Iceland, I, I was looking at that earlier. I don't think we got anything new to report there from that area. Uh, if anything, things are calming down. Obviously, the lava field's going to stay hot and glowing for a little bit. But it, you know, to me, it looks like the fountaining there has pretty much all but died off, at least from this visual perspective. Still quite a bit of volcanic gases there seeping through that main crater. But, uh, you know, things things are going down, it looks like. This is obviously nothing of... Well, there's a little bit of fountaining right there. See that? Just a little bit. But it's hit and miss, it looks like. Uh, far as any update goes, this was put out from yesterday. So they're just kind of chatting about the... Um, the days that it's been erupting, which is about 15, 16 days now, one active crater. And um, there's the, oh, that's probably too big. Let's see here. Well, maybe not. This is the accumulated lava out here um, in, I, I'm guessing that's going to be meters here. The current ongoing eruption here is around this vent. Notice that this lava is just kind of stacking on top of each other here uh, in the lava field. It's pretty deep, but um, it's better than creating further flows down south uh, like we had seen. But uh, for now, again, things look like they're toning down. Let's check out the inflation out here, see what we got. Here's a station there around the Grindavik area. 
This one's operational here. Here's when the eruption began. Of course, there's going to be a decline, a deflationary event. And we're just, I don't know, we're kind of leveled off here a little bit. I don't really see any huge inflation following this ongoing eruption here like, like we had seen last time. You know, during the eruption, we continued to see the land accumulate magma underneath the area. This one's just kind of staying steady there, so I'm not quite sure exactly what or how long this is going to stay in the eruptive stage. Here's the Savart Singhi area. That's the same as well. That's going to be uh, Savart Singhi up here, four hour runs. So not a whole lot of uptrend, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of earthquake activity just around the San Jose area within the last five minutes. Not a big one. A little 1.4 just off the San Andreas Fault there. Uh, aside from that, let's check out space weather, see what's going on here. Looks like a little bit of uh, flaring activity from our sunspot of interest here. Notice that little bright feature. Nothing big right now. Just a C6.5. That is about the only sunspot right now of any noteworthy value. Uh, 3712 there has advanced to a beta gamma delta structure. I knew that was going to happen because it has been growing quite rapidly here in the last 24, 48 hours and growing. Notice that complexity here. That's uh, definitely a growing sunspot. We'll continue to watch that because here over the next couple days or so, this is going to be directly facing Earth. So if anything does blast off, it will be Earth-directed and geo-effective there for sure if any, uh, as far as any CMEs go. Not a whole lot of uh, other sunspots of any value that I can see. Uh, overall threat right now, 5% chance for an X-flare, M-flare at 35% chance, and C-flare around 99% chance. Uh, no auroras in the forecast. Uh, maybe a little bit of uptick there across the extreme higher latitudes. Uh, far as the far side of the sun, 3697 here. That's the, <laughs> that's the sunspot there. If you guys remember, produce all these X flares here recently. And of course, the historic aurora events there last month. Still looks like it's hanging in there. Going to have to watch that uh, in about a week or so. See if it comes back around the bend here for a third time. And of course it will be renamed once again, but same sunspot, just different name. We'll definitely watch that. Uh, in the meantime, the rest here of the far side of the sun, as far as what we have to deal with, it looks fairly quiet. I don't see any major active regions. This is 3691, a former sunspot. Uh, we'll be here in a couple days, it looks like. Uh, but for now, we'll just focus on 3712. See uh, if that decides to shoot off any large flares. All right, Storm Prediction Center here. Um, not a huge amount of severe weather over the next couple days. We do have a little 5% chance for tornado activity. Uh, that is tomorrow, uh, mainly around the Nebraska area up here, it looks like. And, um, yeah, that's Nebraska right there. Eastern Nebraska. Stretching into the Iowa area, it looks like. Um, and then we also got some wind and some hail threats out there. So we'll, we'll watch that for tomorrow. Uh, numerical models out here. I'm looking at some hurricane models. And they're, they're thinking that we got a decent chance of some type of development going on here in the Gulf of Mexico soon. And I've been kind of watching that as well. It does look like something's trying to form here, but it obviously going to shoot up a bunch of moisture into this area. Uh, but nothing fully developed from that system. It could be maybe that system right here. A little bit later on the 23rd, this is the model, or at least the area of interest that we've been looking at here each update. And it's still consistent. Still showing some type of development. Not not a super strong one, but uh, it all depends here on how much time it's got to stir up here in the Gulf of Mexico. Warm, super warm waters, uh, that thing could grow quite rapidly, but 
We'll keep an eye on it. Right now, it's got uh, Louisiana right there in its target if things play out. But again, it's a ways out there. We'll continue to catch each model run and see how it plays out. After that, uh, well, that's that. That's the GFS model. Let me see the... Um, well, the ECMWF I don't think goes out that far. That only goes out into the 18th or so. All right, uh, let's see what else. I think that's about it, folks. I uh, appreciate all the comments there on the, uh, I guess, Chiggers. I guess that's what I picked up there in Texas last week uh, when I was out there. Um, I thought I caught it maybe from the ocean, but it really, or from the Gulf waters out there, but it really didn't start. It, I didn't notice it until about the day I got home. And I had been out of the Gulf waters there for a couple days previously before I came home. So I don't think I got it down there on the Gulf. I think it was potentially um, this park that we walked through. I can't remember the name of the t town. I think it was Graham, Texas out there. There was a park, beautiful green grass, um, a just beautiful day. But I had pants on and I had socks on and I had shoes. But somehow, well, actually I had, I had uh, sandals on. But I was wearing socks. I know. Sandals and socks, right? But um, somehow I, I picked them up. So I'm putting some type of cream on there to prevent the itching. And hopefully it will go away. It's just crazy. That's the only thing I can think of is I picked them up there at the park. Um, weird. Next time I'm going to bring some bug spray for sure. Spray my ankles. Or at least the uh, areas where they can attach onto. Because it is... It is itchy. I can't even explain how itchy it is. I was kept up all night last night because it was itching so bad. But a lot of bites around my ankles. And um, they're itching right now. So i got to stop thinking about it. Anyway. I'm going to jump off here, folks. Um, yeah, still got activity there in Hawaii. Definitely something to watch out here. Um, if we start getting any major earthquake activity in terms of swarming, then we could be looking at a uh, imminent eruption uh, across the area, wherever that uh, earthquake activity is leading up to. So right now, I don't see it. Just a couple small earthquakes out here. But we'll continue to watch this because we are at a, a very high level of inflation here in this region. Uh, right now, the highest level seen since 2018. And, of course, we're above the previous level uh, where we've seen the southwest eruption take place here recently. The southwest rift zone there that uh, lasted for about 10 hours. Very short-lived eruption. I knew it wasn't over. Things are quite elevated here, folks. So uh, just got to watch and wait, see what happens here. Uh, member drawing is tomorrow, June 15th. So we'll shoot for... We'll probably shoot for about 3 o'clock in the afternoon here, California time. And then we'll do the member drawing and uh, give away some prizes. So make sure you jump on board if you uh, would like. Obviously, extra videos, extra emojis and perks and whatnot provided for the members. And uh, we'll do that member drawing tomorrow about 3 o'clock California time. Have a good night, folks. I'm out of here. Need a little bit of sleep. Take care.